today. It's about a Raspberry Pi, a temperature sensor, how we connect these two and how we can read the data out of it and put it in a good looking chart. So stay tuned. So what we have here is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B and a DHT22 temperature sensor. This sensor is about 5 euros and it comes on a little PCB and it's ready to use. We are going to use the Raspberry Pi's GPIO ports. That's this 40 pin header on the top of it. As you can see here, we are going to connect the orange cable to the GPIO port 4, which is actually pin 7. We connect ground to pin 6 and we connect the red cable to pin 1, which is 3.3 volts. Yeah, that's basically it. So let's dig into the software part. First of all, we are going to clone the software we need. You'll find the link in the description of this video. I made a so-called fork of this project because this library we are using is actually a bit deprecated, but it's for our purpose quite good. In order to get this running, we have to install this library and to build it. This only takes a little moment depending on the speed of your little raspberry. And then we are almost ready to go. This library already brings some examples and we are going to use them. So we switch into the examples folder and we are going to use the Adafruit DHT.py script. It's important now what you are typing. You have to add the 22 which stands for the sensor you are using. If you are using the DHT11 sensor for example, you are going to type 11 here. The last digit is the number of the GPIO port you connected your sensor to. You remember we connected it to GPIO pin 4, so we type a 4. And if you made no mistake, it should now display the temperature and the humidity. Easy, huh? So that's nice, but uh, let's continue. The next thing is to put this data into a Google spreadsheet. Fortunately, this library already has a good example for this too. But to get rolling, we need some additional software. Just copy and paste this line and install these dependencies. If you are asking yourself why are we using Google for this, there is an easy explanation for this. The lifetime of the SD card in the Raspberry Pi is slightly limited when you write every minute to it. And since this library already brings a great example of writing to Google spreadsheets, I thought it might be a great idea to use Google just as our database. Next, we reopen this Google spreadsheet.py. There is some documentation in the code and you will find a link to a little tutorial on how to configure your Google account. The link is under this video too. First of all, we need API access for our project. Therefore, we open the Google Developer Console and create a new project. I named my project This Is Pi. After that, we search for the Drive API. We have to enable access to it. After that, we search for the Sheets API, because we need access to this too. Just click Enable again. Now comes the tricky part. We need to create some credentials. For this, we need a so-called service account. The service account needs a name. Take anything you want, I used Pi. It needs permissions, editor permissions to write to a sheet, that's important, and click continue. With this, we are now able to create a key. So click Create Key and make sure JSON is selected. Click Create again. Download the file and remember where you saved it. Now we switch to docs.google.com and create a new sheet. This is going to be our database. 
We give that spreadsheet a name and it's important to remember the name because we need it later. Now we need the file you just downloaded. Just open it in the text editor of your choice and look for a line starting with client email. Copy the value behind and go back to your spreadsheet. Hit the share button on the top and paste that email address you just copied. Make sure the user has editor permissions and click share again. And if this was a bit too quick, you can always go back or pause the video. Back in our text editor, we copy all the contents of the downloaded file and we create a new file on the Raspberry Pi called googleauth.json. We paste all the contents and save the file. Next, we edit the Google spreadsheet py again. We scroll a bit down and we'll find this. Here we can configure which type of sensor we are using. Remember, we are using the DHT22, but if you are using the DHT11, you could change that here. Below, you will find the configuration for the GPIO pin of the sensor. We used pin 4. A little further down, we now add our Google auth.json we just created. Below that, we have to add the name of the Google spreadsheet. Remember, that was rpi-tamp. And then you can configure the frequency, how often this should update. We'll leave that at 30 now. For the next step, we have to find this line, append the data in the spreadsheet, including a timestamp. We are going to change that just a bit. We comment this out, so it won't have any effect, and we type this. With this, we do not append data, but prepend data on the sheet. That's important for us and more on that later. Besides that, we change the format of the date just a tiny little bit. That will help us with our chart later. You can pause the video if this is too quick. When you are done, save the file. We are ready to roll, therefore we type dot slash google spreadsheet dot py to run the script. And if we didn't do any mistakes, it should look like this. And by opening our browser, there should be some data in our spreadsheet. The first column is the date, the second the time, then we have the temperature in Celsius, you can change that to Fahrenheit if you like, and the humidity. In the spreadsheet we are able to set some formats here, that's quite important because they will also apply in the chart we create in a moment. So far so good. You are still with me? Yeah, great. You did a great job. We are almost there. For the last part of this tutorial and to see your chart in your browser, we are going to install a web server on the Raspberry Pi. We are using Apache 2 for this. After the installation script is through, we have to start the server. And to verify it's running, we type the host name of the Raspberry Pi. In my case, it's Pi. It might be an IP address or local host. That's depending on your configuration. The Apache web server stores its documents on the WAR www.html. There is an index HTML which we are going to remove. Next, it's time to clone a little Git repository I created. It contains the HTML and JavaScript stuff we need now. You'll find that link too in the description of this video. Now you can edit the index HTML if you like to, but you don't have to. We concentrate on the app.js. In here you will find a bunch of stuff which you can ignore right now. But you have to change this very link. You have to add your spreadsheet ID. You will find this ID 
in the URL of your spreadsheet, right here. Copy paste it just like this. One thing to make sure is that this sheet variable is set to the exact same name as your document. And finally, after you save the app.js, make sure that the spreadsheet has read access for everyone. That's important to access the data from our chart. View access is enough. If you are done, click done. And there it is. Okay, it's a little bit empty right now, but I can tell you this will grow fast. The blue line shows the temperature and the red line shows the humidity. You can modify what you see from the app.js. For example, you can remove column D, which is the humidity. Remove this, go back to the end and remove the label, save the file and reload the browser or change some other values. And you will see the humidity is gone, now you only have the temperature and the label has changed. One little thing that might be handy is an auto refresh. Just edit the index.html with this and it will reload every 60 seconds. Well, if you made it until your respect. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button or give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much and see you next time.